The CPU is a complicated piece of hardware with lots of different specs, all of which sound important. And in some ways, all of them are important as well, but not for everything. If we zoom in on gaming in particular, we can see that something like cache memory doesn't really play a key role here. That said, gauging a CPU's performance, especially in games, isn't as easy as gauging a GPU's performance. Which makes today's topic really tricky at first glance. In today's video, we'll be covering the difference between locked and unlocked CPUs, how this difference impacts performance, and ultimately, which type is better. So without any further ado, let's begin. As always, we'll start things off by explaining the terminology. The terms locked and unlocked refer to a CPU's clock multiplier. If the multiplier is unlocked, you can adjust it to your will. This process is better known as overclocking. Needless to say, the clock multiplier on locked CPUs is locked, so you can't use it to overclock the CPU. We'll briefly touch upon the benefits and detriments of overclocking in this video, but if you'd like to learn more about this process, make sure to check out the two overclocking-related videos linked in the description. One has to do with the practice in general, and the other is focused on CPU overclocking in particular. So how can you tell if a CPU is locked or unlocked? Surprisingly enough, this is super easy, barely an inconvenience. If you're looking to get an unlocked Ryzen CPU, you can literally not go wrong. All Ryzen CPUs are unlocked, including the cheapest and least powerful Ryzen 3 models. Some Ryzen models end in an X, like the Ryzen 5 3600X. This X denotes that the model has a slightly higher clock speed out of the box and that it is better equipped for overclocking, but as we've said, you can overclock any non-X marked model without any issues. However, things are quite different on the Intel side of things. Here, most of the CPUs are locked. You can distinguish the unlocked models by the K designation. The i5-10600K is one such model. Like all of Intel's unlocked CPUs, it comes without a stock cooler and it yields more results from overclocking than the Ryzen models. KF and HK designations are also used to mark unlocked models. On their own, the F and H designation indicate models that lack integrated graphics and that offer high performance respectively. So KF means unlocked but still lacking integrated graphics. HK means it's high performance CPU that's also unlocked. And that was it for the terminology. Now let's see what the implications of these limitations are like in practice. No doubt, one of the first questions many of you are going to ask yourself at this point is whether there's a way to unlock and then overclock a locked CPU. Some may assume that this is indeed doable, but that it isn't recommended because it voids the warranty and makes the CPU unstable. But this isn't the case. The so-called lock that locked CPUs have isn't a software limitation that can be circumvented with the right tools and some know-how. It refers to a physical process that takes place during the manufacturing process. So if a CPU is locked, you can't overclock it. At least not in the traditional sense. There is such a thing as BCLK overclocking that's done by adjusting the base clock speed of a CPU. Locked CPUs can be overclocked in this way. It works by increasing the CPU's power limit, which boosts the base clock speed but also increases the heat generation. Worst of all, it can cause the CPU to become unstable, so the detriments are fairly severe, especially when we take into consideration that the performance boost that can be achieved by a BCLK overclocking isn't as good as with regular overclocking. This all leads us to a singular question. Is regular overclocking even worth it? Again, there's a whole video that deals with only this topic in more detail, but the crux of the matter is this. Overclocking is best approached as a hobby, and hobbies for the most part are activities we indulge in because they're fun. The fact that overclocked CPUs outperform non-overclocked CPUs of the same model is a fact. We're not trying to dispute that, but for gamers, it's simply not something that is worth pursuing solely for the benefit of a higher FPS count. Because here's the thing, the in-game performance you can get from overclocking a CPU comes down to just a handful of frames. So if the very process of overclocking sounds like a headache and a chore, then you shouldn't do it. Remember also that you will have to get an aftermarket cooler in most cases if you're looking to overclock your CPU. So it's not like it's an entirely inexpensive hobby either. For example, the Ryzen 5 5600X comes with a Wraith Spire cooler. The Wraith Spire can handle the CPU out of the box okay, but it doesn't leave any headroom for overclocking. In the end, if you're unsure whether you should overclock your CPU, just remember one thing. With overclocking, getting there is half the fun. If this is the case, go for it. If not, eh, you can ignore it. It won't really make a noticeable difference anyway. 
Big disclaimer, in this segment, we've been referring to the way overclocking affects gaming in particular. Overclocking can yield a more noticeable performance boost when using a certain CPU-heavy software. It can also make a CPU more future-proof, and it can help mitigate bottlenecks. For a more comprehensive overview of overclocking, we would once again like to refer you to the video where we focus on this topic exclusively. But for gaming, it's not something you should feel obliged to do under any circumstance, even though it will make your game run a bit better if you can do it. In conclusion, whether a CPU is unlocked or locked will determine whether or not it can be overclocked. All Ryzen CPUs are unlocked, but only the K-designated Intel Core models get this treatment. Locked CPUs can technically be overclocked by means of BCLK overclocking, but this technique is not something we recommend. It can easily lead to an unstable performance, and even in the best case scenario, it will only result in a negligible performance boost. Whether or not you should overclock your CPU is entirely up to you. If you plan on overclocking, then an unlocked CPU is a must, but otherwise it doesn't matter all that much. All we can say is that this is completely unnecessary for gaming on modern CPUs. It's much more important that you pick the best CPU for your needs. If you need some guides or pointers on how to do this, feel free to browse our channel as it's full of CPU-related videos. Or you can just skip the research part entirely and check out our list for the best gaming CPUs currently on the market. As always, the link is in the description. And that about does it for this video. We hope you found it helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that you never miss a video. We upload a new one every week, so stay tuned. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.